Okay, so I'm not sure if they could that all people, but an interesting one, uh, and improvement that is, we're a merged organisation, one big happy family, um, since 2016, so three and a half years. Um, and it's been, uh, been quite some time. Um, when I first went to NHS England and asked, um, I won't say who it was, but I sat in the room, somebody very famous, and said, I'm here to deal with the issues of all people. And they said, well, good luck with that. And um, I was sh shushed out of the room um, because it was put in a too difficult box. Um, so I think we're in a much better place. It might not feel like it. I'm also a clinician, so I still see people on the shop floor. Um, but I also spend a lot of time on the West Coast line, up and down between Manchester and London, trying to bring some help. And I think um, at the moment, I will give you some assurance that there is some help on the way, but this is not easy stuff to do. And what I'm going to do is just take you through um, some highlights of the national programme that we have just landed at NHS England and Improvement. This is the first national programme we've ever had in the organisation that's focused around these old people. It's also the first time we've had a plan in nearly 20 years focused around old people. So for those people in my generation, you remember the National Service Framework, uh, which landed in the early uh, 2000s. Um, pretty good plan, actually. And much of that has given us things like falls, uh, management and intermediate care and stroke care, etc., etc. So things have moved on, but we need a new plan. Um, and I take full responsibility for that plan as landing now because it's widened policy. And we have seen a shift in national policy um, just this year to focus with ever greater intent around the needs of older people. Why? Because if we do not deal with those issues, um, I think the NHS will continue to struggle to provide the care it needs to provide to the whole population. So this is really, really important to get right. So, as I say, these slides are ten, ten, ten democratic and boring. Um, the long-term plan is a 10-year plan, so you don't need to read this and you can get the detail. But the important thing to remember is the 10-year plan is funded for five years. Our Prime Minister, just gone, the ex-Prime Minister, announced um, back end of last year a three and a half billion pound investment in primary and community services. So I was mightily surprised to see that by the time this plan made was developed in January, it was actually four and a half billion. How about that for inflation in just a couple of months? So there's quite a lot of money going into this space, and the two main pieces of work are focusing around uh, a development of uh, primary care, that's not just general practice, um, but also community services. And there are a few other uh, key pieces of that jigsaw in and amongst not just the Aging Well programme, my programme, um, but also personalised care, and into that we're also um, putting in the mix uh, dementia care, end of life care, all of these things are important. You can't read this either, um, and you can open this any election, but the, the point is that um, the, the, the key bits of this programme um, are focusing on um, ensuring that there is uh, a national plan, but actually across the regions and across the um, sustainability transformation plan programs, STP footprints, 44 of those across the country, um, that each of those is locally owned and locally uh, designed and clinically led. So you have the answer to the problems that you see in front of you in this room. And you can't read this either. Um, I don't know whether there's any drugs or finance in the room. Good. So the bit in the middle is, is, is not highlighted because that's the financial accountability. The money that we've got out of government for um, the development of community services, and I'll say why we're going out the community and not hospitals in a minute uh, for all the people, um, is your money. That's coming out of our pockets. And therefore, it has to be used, every penny of it, wisely and carefully. 
And what we've hopefully come up with is a plan that will be accounted for and measured, but not in a way that drives everybody into the ground through bean counting, but actually um, delivers some real results on um, patient level and people actually experience better care. So, <coughs> focus with the man. Can you see that? What are we trying to achieve? So let's just simplify things down. By the end of the funding cycle for this, so the, the important thing is this is recurrent money, it's going into the system. We're not going to go through boom and bust. And the planning cycle that is in play now over the summer, and these will be signed off in November, will uh, system by system across the country. Um, with the plans that you will work through um, up until 23, 24. So really important to get this right now. And there is a great sense of urgency, I think, I want to impart to you to actually think ahead as to what you're going to deliver uh, in this space and how you're going to work with it. And everybody has a role to play. The end point for me is this is really simple. That people who receive care, people who deliver care, you, um, as professionals in the room, uh, if you're a patient, as a patient too, that care makes sense to you and you get what you need. Simple as that. And if we went and asked everybody in the street, does the care that you receive make sense to you and you're getting what you need, and the answer is yes, then I would have done my job. The reality is at the moment, if you're an older person, if you're the relative of an older person, if you're my generation, you're now starting to worry about um, your parents, most of my colleagues are now coming to me suddenly finding that after 20 years they have needed a geriatrician. Um, and so we're all starting to face and deal with these issues. And if you're somebody who's trying to navigate your own relative through your care system, it does not make sense. And often people get not what they need, a load of stuff that actually they probably don't need or doesn't make any difference to them. So we have to shift course slightly. And that is not to say that what we have in place at the moment is no good. This is not about taking it all apart and starting all over. Because actually, the NHS is in a really good place. We've been engineered up over 70 odd years a system of care that is highly effective, highly tuned to doing certain things. It's about a shift of direction. It's about building on things like the National Service Framework. Um, work and taking that forward in a way that enables all of that good stuff to continue in the NHS way, and you happen to work. 